call to order the 24th regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are eight present and Alderperson Rinfush is attending remotely. Thank you very much. Um, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Um, next we'll go on to an election of an alder person. About a month ago, Rosemary Trester tendered her, her resignation, and tonight we have two candidates that are vying for that position. Um, and this has been identified as the date for the election of a new alder person to fill the vacancy in District 4. The council wishes to receive nominations this evening and vote on the vacancy. It may do so. However, the council is not required to vote tonight on this vacancy. The council does have the option to include none of the above uh, or on any ballot that's distributed. So with that, I uh, call on Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, make a, um, <laughs> I move the, that nominations be received from the floor with voting to be done in, by open ballot if an option on the ballot does not receive a majority, balloting shall continue until one candidate receives a majority. Is there, I think we, for that support. Nominations are open. Are there any other, any, any nominations? Mayor, Alderperson Wolf. I would like to place the, uh, in nomination, John Hols Holsworth and Betty Rose Ackley. Second. Thank you very much for those nominations. And we have a second. Are there any other nominations? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I move that the nominations be closed. Is there a second? Second. Okay, nominations. All those in favor of closing nominations, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. At this time, we'd like to see if the nominees would like to come and speak before you vote. And I'd offer the, um, the podium to Betty Rose Ackley first. Betty Ann. I did write a statement just because I am terrified of public speaking and I apologize in advance for this. However, my name is Betty Ackley. I have been a resident of Sheboygan for 10 years and have resided in the 4th District with my husband Ted and my four children since 2015. Ted is a native of Sheboygan and his parents were involved in this community. His father was with the Sheboygan Police Department for 31 years and his mother was a beloved German teacher in the school district. My husband and I decided that Sheboygan was a great place to raise our family and we have every intention of living here for the rest of our lives. I am currently a part-time student at Lakeshore Technical College and I'm the Vice President of the Student Council there. I will be transferring to UW-Green Bay in the fall of this year to continue to pursue a bachelor's degree in psychology. I also work part-time as a market research analyst for a business consulting firm. As I mentioned in my letter of interest, I have found that many residents keep to themselves and are not involved with the community beyond their own backyards or nearby neighbors. I am the first to admit I have not attended my neighborhood association meetings, but I should have. I want to ensure that my area flourishes and I want to see our city grow in a positive trajectory. I must look beyond my immediate family and find ways to provide service for my community. When I consider this, it reminds me of the story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. 
There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have. So I must now ask myself, who am I? Am I the nobody that didn't stand up for my community? Maybe I should be the somebody that will do something instead. I realize that there are some hot button issues that have been points of contention, such as the armory and the state of our city roads. I believe that there must be fiscal responsibility and I understand that not everyone will be happy with every single decision that the council makes. However, by offering level-headed communication without allowing personal opinions to motivate decisions, the Common Council can assist city government officials in allowing Sheboygan to grow for the decades to come. I realize that some people may feel that a position on the Common Council is a form of a status symbol. However, it should be far more than that. The City Council should be filled with individuals who are willing to discuss civilly the best way to help our city. I feel that by communicating with the constituents and bringing their needs and desires to the table, the Common Council can understand what the people want. However, those who serve must also maintain not only a fiscal but a moral responsibility to the citizens of Sheboygan to ensure that the city thrives. If I am chosen as a District 4 Alder person, I can assure you all that I will be involved. I will ask questions. And if a constituent asks questions I don't have the answer for, I will find the correct person who can answer the question. I am not someone with an ego that feels I need accolades for the things I have done. I am a resident of District 4 and I believe in my neighbors and my community. I feel that there is something I can do to help my neighbors in my district. I know that being a representative means professionally representing the district, not allowing personal opinions to cloud the vision of the city but listen to the constituents and help the city continue to thrive. It would be an honor and a privilege to serve my fellow residents of District 4. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, I call up John Holsworth. John? Hello. Yeah, my name is uh, John Holtzworth, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to talk to everybody here and uh, tell you a little bit about myself. I, I'll try not to be redundant with anything that I've already uh, stated in uh, my uh, letter of interest. But, um, yeah, I'm born and raised in Sheboygan. I, my father was born in Sheboygan, my grandfather and my uh, great-grandfather came here from Rheinwald, Russia. So I, um, I'm pretty comfortable in this town and I, it has a special place in my heart. It's, it's kind of funny when I travel, I tell people I'm from Sheboygan. <laughs> I keep thinking of my friend from Arkansas, Sheboygan? I just love saying the name. <laughs> so uh, and I wear my Sheboygan t-shirt when I'm out and about. I mean, a little more about me is, and you probably read too, that I'm, I'm um, hired as a historic demonstrator, you know, and so I do travel a little bit. Um, and uh, I never thought I'd grow up to be the broom maker, but I make, I make brooms. And I uh, put on the straw hat and suspenders, and I go to different fairs and festivals. And, um, but I'm always happy to come back to Sheboygan, where it's familiar, you know, which is, I really love being so close to the lake and uh, the Kettle Moraine nearby, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I really want to make a difference in my community too. You know, I mean, I I see a lot of other great things happening in other communities and other parts of the country, and I think, man, I'd love to bring that back to Sheboygan or do something like that in Sheboygan. That would be really cool. You know, um, yeah. So, and I, I'm a little bit selfish, but I would like to travel less. You know, I'd like to ride my bike here. You know, to to a job instead of having to take my cargo van five states away, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I, really, um, I really enjoy being here in Sheboygan, and I want to I give back. I want to contribute. I, um, you know, speaking of my travel, too, I mean, I, I have booked some fairs this year already, too. So my, my busy season is uh, July, August, September, October. But, um, you know, there's still eight months where I'm home. Um, and... 
from my understanding that there's a potential to do some remote uh, connection through a Skype or some sort of remote meetings, which is which is great um, because most times I have access to Wi-Fi or internet when I travel. Um, if chosen uh, to to be uh, the older person in District 4, I believe that um, my communication skills would be a big asset. I've taken some um, intensives with uh, the subject of uh, nonviolent communication, which was uh, a model of communication developed by Marshall Rosenberg back in the 1960s or 70s. Um, and I've also done some other personal growth work, too. So I, um, I see myself as a pretty humble guy. And I think that I can bring that humility as a servant uh, to this community. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Well, we have two very good candidates for this position. I think you're going to have a difficult vote to make. But at this time, I'd ask uh, Assistant City Attorney Thomas Cameron to distribute ballots. Uh, please mark your ballots and hold them up when, they're, when you're done, and we'll come and collect them. And then count the ballots. Thank you. Just hold your hand up when you have your ballot finished. Ron? Yes. Who is your vote for, please? Rose Ackley. Thank you. Well, congratulations to Betty Rose Ackley. She's our new alderperson for the 4th District. John, thank you very much for your interest. We appreciate it. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Betty Ann, maybe Betty Ackley, to please come forward. And uh, we're going to swear you in, and then you can take a seat in the District 4 position and function as an older person for the remainder of our meeting.
And we'll just be doing a voice vote for you when we when we poll the aldermen, uh, so you will be able to vote on the other items that are coming up on the agenda. And then we'll fit you up with uh, one of our little computers, so you're all set for a future meeting. Um, okay, next, uh, our mayor's appointments. So turn it over to Assistant City Attorney. Honorable members of the Common Council. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. The newly elected alder person, uh, Betty Rose Ackley uh, of District 4 to be considered for appointment to the Licensing, Hearings, and Public Safety Committee to fill the unexpired term of Rosemary Trester, whose term expires April 15th, 2019. And that appointment has to lie over until our next meeting. Um, and then we have uh, confirmation of mayor's appointments. I hereby submit the following for your consideration. Paul Gottsacker to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the unexpired term of Adam Kane, whose term expires April 20th, 2020. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of confirmation, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. City Attorney. Honorable members of the Common Council, I, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Vicki Schneider to be considered for appointment to the position of Director of Senior Services. And Vicki is with us in the back of the room uh, with Wendy Schmitz. Welcome, Vicki. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the confirmation, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, Vicki. Uh, next on the agenda is a presentation on the Mead Library Plaza renovation presented by City Planner Chad Pelichek. Thank you, everybody. Tonight I wanted to present on the renovation, proposed renovation to the uh, Mead Library um, Plaza area. Um, I've gotten some questions from some of you aldermen and thought it was a good thing to share with you. So if you can go to the next slide. I'm sorry about the color because on my screen at the, com at the desk it looks really good, but on Meredith's screen it looks good too. So I'm sorry we will never use this col color again. Anyway, um, back in 2015, the city... Uh, development staff identified uh, six, seven locations along A Street on, that we called in living underutilized spaces. So these were uh, primarily alleys and uh, li the library plaza area that were identified as uh, places that we felt could be enhanced to be able to kind of either create connection between parking lots and make alleys more safe and and uh, usable as well as placemaking. So a lot of the uh, red stars you see on this map is locations that have undergone some kind of placemaking activity, uh, primarily by the John Michael Kohler Arts Center and their street alley uh, projects that they've instituted over the course of the few, last few years. The really key location that was left as part of this plan was the area around the library plaza, uh, particularly as it relates to the Helpern Fountain and that concrete area to the east of the library. Next slide. So the area we're talking about is the block uh, that primarily makes up the uh, library plaza, including the fountain and the drive lane that goes in to service the book uh, drop-off. Uh, there will be some modifications also to the parking lot to the west of the library, um, but the, the, most of the work is happening either on the east side of the library or in the Helpern Plaza area. Next slide. So this uh, was identified in the 2014 Downtown Harbor Center Master Plan as a key location uh, for redevelopment, and it was particularly uh, brought to the table once City Green was developed to look at how to 
kind of create the library in the library plaza with City Green to serve kind of as that uh, center urban, urban core area where a lot of activity could happen. So um, that's really where it originally came out. There was some plans of filling in the Helpern Fountain and putting plantings and stuff in it. Um, in that plan, uh, we did not go that direction, but if you were to pull up that plan today, you would see that. Next slide. So the picture up on the left, top right, uh, top left is the existing uh, aerial, uh, aerial of the uh, library, and then you can see the proposed plan. So really what is changing is the entranceway as you walk into the front of the library from A Street. That's probably where you'll see the biggest change. Um, right now it's kind of a jogged pathway as it follows the contour of the fountain. Um, under some proposed repairs that will happen to the walls of the fountain uh, to deal with some maintenance issues, the plan is to create this kind of straight through sidewalk on the north side of the library underneath the canopy of the library. So you can see in the proposed plan the uh, area where the sidewalk goes straight through between the parking lot and the street. And then the improvements that will be happening particularly on the east side of the library uh, where that sea of concrete will be taken out and more landscaping with trees and grass will be put in. Next slide. Also the area to the northwest of the library where you drive in today uh, for the uh, book drop off will be uh, eliminated and greened up with trees and grass and you will enter the book drop off now through the parking lot. So instead of having its own dedicated lane, you'll come in through the parking lot and then turn on that little curve and you can then drive and drop your books off. Um, as part of the planning of that, it was decided that that kind of cleaned up that area where we've got a lot of pedestrian traffic and people not sure where to drive and which lane they're supposed to be in and people going backwards and um, all that on that kind of little core there. So the, the idea behind rerouting that road was really to deal with pedestrian safety issues that are uh, potentially happening in the front of the library. Next slide. Um, also as part of the plan, the clock tower, which has not functioned in a couple of years, uh, the clock and, and some deferred maintenance on that clock tower will be coming down. Um, those panels you see on the four sides of the clock will be repurposed into uh, a sculpture that will occur along the street. So if you go to the next slide, this is what the street will look like from basically across the road at City Green. So there'll be a plaza area uh, just on the northeast corner, yeah, northeast corner of the library. And then those uh, decorative panels that were done as part of a art project when that tower was built will be relocated into these four pedestal columns that will kind of be the backdrop of this uh, plaza area. Also these large block areas then will be serve as a place where people can sit down and you know play on their computer or their phone or read a book um, to try to give it a, a defined area of where that's where that should happen and then everything basically in the clock in the east side of the library to the south will then be greened and and treed up um, and so a lot of that concrete then will be gone. Next slide. Under the Helpern Fountain updates, the, the, plan, the original plan of the Helpern Fountain had a number of l landscaping and green trees um, that kind of encompassed the fountain, so it wasn't this large concrete structure. Um, so the, the plan is to bring some of that back. Um, so you can see on the, on the lower picture uh, towards the right, the wall will be straightened out where the sidewalk will go straight into the north side of the library. Um, there'll be some additional planters added and some different tiers of trees that will be happening in that area. Right now, if you were out there, that whole area is all this like steps down that are on an L shape. So the L shape, the southern leg of that will be removed and then put in with planters and some landscaping to try to enhance that as well as some landscaping that will happen on the right side and then some new trees and stuff around the back where the Christmas tree is in the, at the Christmas season. Next slide. So this is another look of that same area today. These are primarily those, st those small steps that go down that area where the person is standing in the back then will be uh, as part of a structural issue dealing with building some new planters in that area and greening up and adding additional trees. 
There will also be some new bollard lighting. So along the street side of that um, plaza down to the fountain, there's some round uh, looking concrete bollards that um, some work, some don't. I like to say that those look like little minions. Um, those will be removed and this more modern type bollard lighting will be there to be able to light the walkway uh, in the path, the area down to the fountain. So the question I received a few times is how is this being funded? In the uh, TIF 16 capital, and pro capital Improvement Project Fund, there was 400,000 uh, borrowed for this. Um, and then the difference is coming from the 2019 Community Development Block Grant allocation of around 237,000. So the project has been bid out and you've awarded contracts at about 637,000 total. Uh, there was a pre-construction meeting last week. Mike Canning Construction is the contractor. Um, they will start work sometime in April uh, and be completed sometime in mid-August, weather depending. So the whole, pretty much the library area will be unusable for most of the summer. Um, however, there will be still access to the library and access to the book drop-off. Just in a few days that paving is happening, those um, accesses may be uh, closed. But the idea is to obviously keep the library open to the public during this time and work through these updates. So that's it. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Alder Person Wolfen and Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chad, I think this is a, a great project for the city. Uh, our, our library is one of, the, one of the many diamonds that we have here. And I think by dressing it up, modernizing the outside, um, it's going to, again, draw more people to, to the, the great facility that we have. So good job. All the person boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple of things, Chad, uh, as far as uh, accessibility to the building. Uh, has there been any consideration in maybe doing some heated sidewalks on that uh, sidewalk from A Street up to the door? Uh, I know we're going to be heating the new City Hall parking lot, at least the area, uh, to, to make that less slippery in the winter. And then my second question is, uh, on the west side of the parking lot, are there going to be any enhancements made to that parking lot as far as not having to park and then walk over that that hump and then you got the driveway where the book lane is now and then in then into the library how is can, that going to look can you go back a couple slides so go back okay let's go back that one so if you look at the proposed plan on this slide um the parking where the it's hard where the tree line stops on the west edge on the northwest corner there the, that would be the drive lane today into the library. That's going to become the parking lane where the uh, handicapped accessible stalls will be. Okay. So you will base, and there'll be a sidewalk between the, the parking stalls and where this oak grove kind of of trees will start. So you'll be able to just get on the sidewalk and come straight across, and you won't have any more of those, all of those different. That was one of the challenges because you've got all these different grades happening in such a small area. So it'll be more conducive to. Um, being able to park and get into the library. The wow. idea of the heated sidewalks, there, I mean, it was talked about that we had to trim the cost way down to even get to this point. The original estimate was over a million dollars uh, to do it. So we, you know, picked up the highest priority as we could. And, you know, unfortunately, there wasn't enough funding to do it all. Okay. Well, I would think that, you know, from an accessibility standpoint with the handicapped parking, if there was any way to do it, it might be better to do it from there, maybe than from A Street. And uh, you know, I don't, any estimate at all what it, what it was going to cost to do that? I'm not sure that we even got an estimate because I think Daryl might have take trim that out right off the bat. Is there any uh, any possibility of just uh, getting an estimate for you know maybe from that back parking in? I, don't, I have no idea how long it would be, but is there any chance of maybe getting, a, getting an estimate I on that? I look at David and Brian. Okay. Okay. Right. 
Yeah, it's it's no it was no problem the way it is now in the summer, but in the winter, particularly this winter, it was quite difficult. Yeah, I think with, with, without having that drive, you won't have the snow banks. You'll just have the sidewalk over there. You really need to store snow on the grass area, and again, it should be much clearer, accessible. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, Chad. Thank you very much for the presentation. Next item on our agenda is public forum. Is there anyone here for public forum tonight? There is no one this evening. Okay, then we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Okay, I'd like to call up Jess Childs from AmeriCorps Nourish uh, Farm to Food School program. Tonight we have a proclamation. Uh, whereas service to others is the hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges. And whereas the nation's elected leaders are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet their needs. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our communities. They educate students for the 21st century jobs. They fight opioid epidemic. They respond to natural disasters and support veterans and military families. And whereas national service expands economic opportunity by creating a more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants serve in more than 50,000 locations across the country, bolstering the civic neighborhood and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. And whereas national service participants increase the impact of their organizations that they serve through their direct service by managing millions of additional volunteers. And whereas national service represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact increase the return on taxpayer dollars. And whereas national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making intensive commitment to service and a commitment that remains with them in all their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with local leaders nationwide to engage in citizens, to improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the National League of Cities, the National Association of Counties, the Cities of Service, local leaders across the country for National Service Recognition Day on April 2nd of 2019. And therefore be it resolved that I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim April 2nd is National Service Recognition Day. And I'd like to present this to Jessica Childs today and offer her an opportunity to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, hi, I'm Jess Childs. I am with AmeriCorps. This is my service year. I'm working with the Farm to School program, and my host site is Nourish. Uh, we're out in Sheboygan Falls, but I'm working with the Sheboygan School District. Uh, so far this year, I've taught 450 third through fifth graders five nutrition lessons. They learn the food groups, where food comes from, food diversity and culture, uh, food identification, and building healthy habits. I also am writing grants for several of our schools with the highest percentage of free and reduced lunch to be able to break ground on school gardens this spring. Um, so as I said, I'm, I'm stationed out at Nourish. We're at the uh, just re renovated Miley Dairy Barn in Sheboygan Falls. Uh, if any of you have a chance to visit, I highly encourage it. We're having an open house April 6th to kind of um, showcase the barn. Our offices are downstairs and the loft upstairs is a beautiful uh, barn space. Um, but also Nourish is having a big farm to school fundraiser in September to further our efforts to bring local farmers together with our school district and get more of that uh, healthy, locally grown food into the stomachs of our school children. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much.
Um, you may <clears throat> not realize it, but our council meeting tonight is not being broadcast uh, live or streamed. Seems that the uh, recent floods have created some problems with some of the connections because this signal goes all the way out to UWS or UWGB Sheboygan campus where WSCS is housed and then it's rebroadcast out and their service has been completely out since the, the flood waters uh, got into that area. So the uh, meeting is being taped and it will be uh, broadcast later on after WSCS gets service back again. Um, also want to remind people about the candidate forums coming up on March 28th in the Roca Room of the Mead Library. Um, uh, preparing for the election on April 2nd, Barb Feldy and Nicholas DeSalt will be running for the open seat in the 1st District. And they'll be uh, on from six, at 6 p.m. And then uh, the District 9 incumbent Trey Mitchell and challenger Dean Schaefer are scheduled for 7 p.m. The uh, senior activity is having an open house on March 26 to say goodbye and happy retirement to the activity center supervisor, Wendy Schmitz. Uh, Wendy has dedicated the last 13 years of her life to the senior activity center. Uh, remind people that uh, they should try to avoid late fees on their pet licenses. They must renew by April 1st or pay a, a slight penalty of $5. And we also want to remind people that uh, spring cleanup is uh, underway at the Wildwood Cemetery and they need to remove all winter decorations by April 1st or if they're not, they'll be disposed of by the cemetery staff. And then on April 2nd, of course, our spring election. Um, and uh, we want to remind people that early voting is available at the city clerk's office in the old social security office on 9th Street. And uh, the times are from, uh, what, 7 o'clock until uh, 4.30, Monday through Friday. And this will end on Friday, March 29th, when they'll be open from 8 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m. And I'm sorry, that starts at 8 o'clock, not 7 o'clock. Sorry about that, <laughs> Meredith. Um, and then I just uh, want to say that uh, at prior to our staff meeting this morning, uh, the city staff had a chance to go over to City Hall and take a tour uh, the way the, the building's developing. And it, it's really looking amazing. I think everybody's going to be extremely happy. Um, and uh, it's only 77 days until we move back into City Hall for our council meeting on June 3rd. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.8. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Ron? Aye. I'm not seeing nothing. Mine didn't come up. Did you might have to do it verbal. All right. Mr. Bourne? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Um, Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Rose Ackley? Aye. There's nine ayes. Motion passes. Uh, and then, then we'll go on to officer, reports of officers. Item 3.1 is RO number 229 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission, to whom is referred General Ordinance number 47 of 1819 by Alderperson Phillips and RO number 224 of 1819 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Prohibition Bistro uh, requesting an encroachment into portions of lot number one promenade South Pier for the purpose of expanding outdoor patio area and wishing and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on March 12th and after due consideration recommends that the general ordinance and RO be accepted all the person uh, born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, make a motion to accept and file and pass the ordinance. 
Is there a second? No. Okay, the motion is, is on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ron? <coughs> Aye. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 3.2 through 3.5 will be referred to various committees. And under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 273 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 182 of 1819 by all the persons for inflation born authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the pilot agreement between the city of Sheboygan and the Wasserman Redevelopment LLC and the Housing Authority of the city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin with regard to the Housing Authority's rental project located at 611 North Water Street recommends approving the resolution with the amended agreement. Alderperson uh, Ryan well, Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt Pass the resolution with amended agreement. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Just a little information. The uh, Wasserman project is going to be undergoing a complete redo. They also got a grant from WIDA, so this will help to augment that uh, project. Seeing no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Ron? Aye. Exactly. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 274 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 183 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue dissolving the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force and recommends approving the substitute resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion is before us on, under discussion. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll be voting against this tonight, um, and I encourage my colleagues to do the same as well, too. Um, I do have some concerns with uh, dissolving the Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force. Um, I don't believe that the substitute um, addition to creating this as more of an internal city staff uh, meeting um, would really meet the best needs of the city as well. Um, kind of going down the list, I know we talked about this at the committee level also. I did vote against it in committee. Um, I believe that, uh, that there's still a lot more that the public has a, a, an interest in. Um, I think that if this committee sets new goals, refocuses, I think that there's a lot to accomplish. Um, I served as uh, an alderman representative for my first year on the council for one year. Um, and at that time, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, I was on that committee, um, there was a lot of good public input. There were a lot of regulars that showed up and gave their suggestions and ideas and shared their thoughts to this committee as well, um, as well as they had... Um, uh, Etude High School also would bring their science class in um, to do part of their classwork as well, too. I think that there's a lot of good ideas that we can do, uh, um, utilize moving forward. Um, so I'll be voting no, and I encourage everyone else to vote no as well. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Donahue, and then Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, it, does, it sounds horrible, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness, we're going to get rid of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. It sounds like it's a step backward. It is my understanding, based on our discussion at uh, LHPS and uh, reports of staff, that in fact the Sustainable Task Force had trouble uh, meeting a quorum requirement, uh, that although it had originally done uh, um, a lot of fine work, it had, as sometimes happens with commissions and committees and task forces and so forth, had kind of lost steam. Um, it is my hope that um, 
uh, and I think implicit in LHPS's uh, approval of this resolution uh, was to task our city administrator, um, in fact, to create a city department green team and to have more than just an annual uh, report. I know the resolution just says annual, uh, but I think that the sense of the group was that um, we need to see how city staff is approaching this. I would see as kind of an organic, if you will, um, development from this is that more citizen input and more citizen participation will come forward sort of in a new form. So the old body um, uh, has more or less outlived its usefulness, and we need to just make sure that the city green team and further sustainability efforts uh, remain forward on the plate. I think they will. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I kind of uh, tend to agree with Alderman Sorensen on this one. Uh, I, I, I never served on the committee, but being involved with the Public Works Committee for a number of years, uh, I kind of followed out, uh, followed what they were doing, and I think it was similar to the similar to the Parks Committee. That that committee is kind of an uh, adjunct co committee to the Public Works Committee, and I think this one was in a certain way. And uh, you know, if there's a, if there was an issue with quorum, uh, I think this is the only committee that I'm aware of that met during the noon hour. And I think some of the people on that committee were people that had uh, nine to five jobs. And I, I don't know, was, was there an effort to see if that, if, you know, changing the time of meeting to, uh, you know, like we, most of our committees meet at 4 or 4.30, was there, was there an effort to do that? Was there a poll taken of the committee members to see if this was really going to work a noon meeting? And the problem with noon meetings and people having to, be, having to get back to work, of course, there's going to be, people are going to be watching their, their watches to make sure they can get back to work. So. Uh, you know, I would like to see a, you know an effort made to maybe poll the you know poll those members to see if there was a better meeting time than meeting at noon. Thank you, uh, Chad Pelichek. Can you respond to that? Chad's been serving as chairman of the committee. There was a number of times where we tried four four thirty meetings as well as noon meetings. We found that, given that the number of people on it were primarily from the private uh, business sector, that it it appeared that noon meetings worked the best for them um, to try to get the quorum. There was 15 members on that committee, so in order to get a quorum, we needed eight or nine people there, which is the size of most other committees. So it was a, it was a challenge just getting enough people committed and the fact that we had representation from a wide range of people may, you know, pose an additional challenge. But at any given time for any meeting, we would try three, four different dates and had to cancel it because people would cancel out and we wouldn't have a quorum. Thank you, Chad. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> I guess I, I, looking at this, I, I ask our alders to think of it a little bit different also, uh, somewhat to what Mary Lynn was saying. Sometimes uh, groups do fizzle. Sometimes they accomplish a certain task that are ne that's needed at the time, which I believe that they did a great job of. Um, the city has continued to grow and change and, and morph. And, and speaking of morph, Think of it as, you know, uh, like the butterfly. It goes into, you know, when it's just the worm, it, it tends to build and um, create into a cocoon. And then sometimes we have to cancel something, see where the drive and desire is, and we'll get a new group uh, that'll come in with even more energy uh, by canceling this one. It is part of our strategic plan. It is something that is uh, on all of our management team's agendas. So. If there is a, an outcry from, of support, we'll be able to get new people that will have much more desire than for us to have 15 members that um, have become stagnant and things just aren't moving forward. So I recommend that we, we uh, continue to move forward on this and if it becomes an issue in the future, we can always bring it forward again with uh, new drive and desire. Thank you for those comments. Um, one of the things that happened over the last several years is Sheboygan became a member of the green tier uh, communities of Wisconsin. And um, in there, we've looked at best practices with some of our, our other compatriots in that group. And I'd like Chad to talk a little bit about, I believe it's so clear, and he patterned this concept after that. Sure. Thanks, Mayor. So 
we we did pattern this after the city of Eclair. They were in a very similar situation where they had this private public private sector committee and basically like us had challenged getting the people there to uh, serve and as well as the people that were there they provided some good uh, information and ideas but there wasn't a lot of implementation so it have it would fall on the city staff members to try to implement those ideas and and a lot of times they lost steam so they reorganized into the same model that we are where they have a city green team uh, that's primarily representation from the respective departments that gets together on a quarterly basis and talks about sustainable issues uh, as it re may relate to capital improvements programs, as it may relate to just general budgeting and products and services that uh, we contract for. So the, uh, this isn't something new for us. That, well, it's new for us, but it's not new for uh, being tried because Eau Claire, this is really modeled after the way Eau Claire has operated. The other thing I just wanted to mention is um, I do sit on the board of the Green Tier um, Committee, so as on the Executive Committee and I'm very involved with those sustainable efforts on a statewide basis. And, and the other thing is, is we're also looking at building, designing a sustainability guidebook that will be used for our neighborhood associations and residents to be able to implement sustainable projects on a how-to way, uh, how to move forward on sustainable strategies within their respective neighborhoods. So we've had communication with some of our neighborhood associations as it relates to this, and it appears that people are on board with uh, this approach. Thank you, Chad. Is there any other discussion? Alder Person Savaglio? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm really torn on this one. Uh, I walked into the meeting today thinking that I was definitely going to vote against this. Uh, and after hearing the comments from the room, I'm very uh, pleased to see that we'd be pushing forward with st sustainable uh, items. However, I really feel like we're not going to get to the big ideas if we get rid of this task, task force. Uh, the smaller ideas, the the day-to-day -day operations, how we can uh, implement capital improvements to be more sustainable, sure. But where where will the big ideas from our community come from if we don't really have an open and accessible way for them to come to us? Uh, I I would uh, I, I guess I'll be voting against this at this point in time just because I don't see a way forward for that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Is there any other discussion? Alder Person Phillips. I guess I also am feeling a little bit torn, as um, Alder Person Savaglio mentioned. I have been appointed to this committee and served on it since April of last year. Um, so I know that we have only had two meetings in the past, whatever that is, nine or ten months, due to the fact that we haven't been able to have a quorum. So that has been an issue. Um, I do think that the community needs to be able to have input, however, and I am curious if we could at least have someone from the council still appointed to that committee where the community could bring forth their concerns to that older person to bring forward to the committee. Thank you for those comments. Older person Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a few additional comments um, that I kind of want to have that been popping up in my head with other discussion. Um, kind of just want to make talk about difficulty meeting quorum. I, I reject that argument. Um, I, I'm on the Mayor's International Committee. That committee has 17 members. Um, I'm also on the Maywood Park Board. That board has 30, 36 members on that as well, too. Um, those committees, you know, I haven't really struggled at all since my time on those committees, you know, meeting quorum at all. Um, you know, if you, if you want to make the, the argument that, oh, it's difficult meeting quorum, we should restructure the entire committee. I mean, at the time when we only had about four members on the, the licensing and public safety meeting, I mean, we struggled quorum. If we struggled quorum with so much, were we just going to get rid of that committee? I, I don't buy that at all. Um, I, I, I agree with uh, Alderperson Savalio and uh, Phillips, their statement as well, too. I think this really comes down to transparency and creating a good space for folks in the community to share their thoughts, get innovative ideas on how to move the city forward. Um, I definitely want to see big, bright ideas. Um, brought to the, the forefront of this as well, too. I think if you look at sort of our docket, we got a lot of issues down the line that relate to sustainability, and I think we would, would benefit as a city from having public input. I think if you look at how we're restructuring um, garbage collection, I think that's a sustainable effort that definitely will need public input as well, too. Um, 
I mean, I could go down the list. Composting, we talk about water resources, we talk about parks, you know, whatever it might be. I think there's a lot of things as well, too. Um, if we're struggling with members that are on this committee, if they're not showing up, you know, then quite frankly, it comes down to the mayor's responsibility to make sure that we're appointing members to this committee that are showing up and that have dedication and passion for this issue. Um, so again, I'll be voting no and encourage others to do so as well, too. Thank you. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, uh, Just expanding a little bit on what Alderman Sorensen said, you know, we're coming to the end of this council year, and I'm wondering, you know, you're going to be making appointments to the various uh, uh, committees and commissions. I'm wondering if we shouldn't maybe hold off on this decision until, in, unless your efforts, you know, you make the best effort, maybe work with Chad, maybe to even downsize the committee, but still try to have good citizen input and see what you can do for the new council year. And if it looks like it's going to be an impossibility uh, to people that are going to be able to dedicate the time or, you know, come up with a, a, a meeting time that's good for everybody, maybe we should give it one more shot in the new council year. And if you don't have any success, maybe then bring it back, but maybe not give up on it until you get another chance to maybe work on that committee for the new council year. All the members of the committee are one-year appointments, so everyone's term would be up if you keep the committee in place, and all of them will be asked uh, either if they want to continue or not, and if they can make the meetings. Uh, so we'll go through that process, and we can fill in the empty slots and bring some new people in if that's what you desire. Would it be a, would it be appropriate then to make a motion to hold this document until until early in the new council year to see what success you have on forming a new committee? I think it would probably be better to vote it up or down, and, uh, and we'll live with your decision. Well, just a point of order, uh, Mr. Chair. If Alderman Warren wants to make a motion, he should make a motion. I don't think it's out of order. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion to hold this document until uh, the, uh, the first, the first uh, meeting in May. And that would give you time to, you know, to form a committee, if it's going to be possible to form a committee, to come up with the members, and then let's take another look at this at our first council meeting in May. But my, my motion is just to hold it until the first meeting in May. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second on a motion to hold. Uh, Assistant City Attorney, is that debatable? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> is there any discussion on the motion to hold? Seeing no discussion on the motion to hold, all in favor of holding, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Please call roll. the roll. No. Thank you, Ron. So an aye, an aye mm -hmm. vote is to hold it? The motion to hold, yeah. Aye. We have eight ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Well, for the record, uh, just a point of order. Mayor, I'm sorry, I thought we had voted orally, and my vote was no, and so if the record would reflect that, my vote would have been no. So then we're seven to three. Okay, motion still passes. Um, next item is item 5.3, that's RC number 275 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred resolution number 184 of 1819 by Alderpersons Wolf and Donahue, changing the starting time of the organizational meeting of the new council uh, year for, uh, of 2019 and 2020 and recommends approving the substitute resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ron? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. 
Under general ordinances, items 6.1 through 6.3 will be referred to various committees. And uh, well, next we'll move on to other matters. I'll turn it over to Assistant City Attorney Thomas Cameron. Thank you. We have, we have uh, item number 7.1, which is RO 234-1819, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2019, <coughs> April 14, 2020, and June 30th, 2020. That will be referred to licensing hearings and public committee. And we have item 7.2, which is resolution number 194-1819, <coughs> a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to indicate the city's intent to obtain a new Vactor truck in 2020. That also to be referred to the Public Works Committee. Next is a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub e, Wisconsin stats, yeah. where where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the opportunities for land transfer related to the parcel number 59030454421, comma, 59030454450, comma, 59030454460, and 59030454460. Four five four four six two, located in the town of Wilson. Thank you. Is there a second? I say bravo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as support. We we have a motion before us. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Alder Person Rentflesh. Aye. Ten eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a three-minute recess, and, this, and we will plan to adjourn in closed session, so this will end the taped, uh, taping of our meeting for tonight. Thank you.